Hello folks, this is Mr. O'Brien, and welcome to the first of three uh, video quizzes on the transition from artisan to worker, or that of artisan to employee uh, in the factory. All right, and my name is Mr. O'Brien. Let's get started. All right, the historiography of the Industrial Revolution. The word historiography is basically a term, remember, referring to what we wrote. Okay, what we wrote about the Industrial Revolution and how that changed, what historians were writing, and what we as a people thought about it. All right, and it changes over time. So, first I'm going to read from the notes up on the PowerPoint slide, then I'm going to read from the notes underneath the PowerPoint slide. So, before the 1970s versus the 1960s and after. If you look at the note underneath, so before the 1970s, the Industrial Revolution was thought of as a cataclysm, like pulling a bandit off fast and revolutionary. So it was, we thought it was a swift and quick transition to modern society, that it was usually negative and it was overturned, or that it overturned, structures of work, family, and values. Now, what we have since realized, or what historians have since realized is, in the long run, it did do all that stuff, but it didn't do it quickly. It took almost the entire 1800s, or at least 1820 to 1860 the, when the Civil War began. All right, it happened. Uh, this transition from this art world of artisans to this world of factories took a long time to happen. And remember, it happened at different pa paces, in different places, in different industries. Also, remember, it began in the North. And historians no longer use the term industrial revolution. They now call it, as you see on the slide, the market revolution. All right. And it evolved over most of the 19th century. It was not just technological progress that swept everything before it, this inevitable thing that couldn't be stopped. All right. And it was not seen as a revolution because it wasn't all that fast. And since it was happening so slowly, it didn't seem like all that much changed. Alright, so this change, if you look at note number two, this change in the way we wrote about the uh, market revolution begins in the 1960s. And it was marked by a change, or caused by a ch historical change, meaning uh, scholars changed what they were int interested in. They were inter first interested in political history, and in the 60s became more interested in what's called social history, or, or the way we organized each other and interacted with each other, looking at different types of sources more uh, people-oriented sources rather than uh, these big, big famous documents or the documents from the management class in the factory. So if you look at letter C here, these historians began to look at people as these, as these, these working class people as actors, historical actors with agency as opposed to being merely just passive victims or recipients of this big bad technology. And the two most prominent uh, labor historians that changed the way we look at the at working class history were E.P. Thompson from England and Herbert Gutman of the United States. And they, together, if you look at the bottom here, they showed how pre-industrial and traditional cultures and values shaped people's responses to industrialization. And the difficulties, they show the difficulties that modernizers had in getting compliance to these new demands of technology. What I mean by that is, and you should underline or highlight the phrase pre-industrial. Basically their argument was, uh, this technology didn't just happen, people had to decide to do it, people made decisions to use this technology, install machines, install clocks, and so forth in factories, so it didn't just overtake us as this inevitable thing, people decided to use it. The other thing is, the workers, they resisted it. They didn't just accept it. It was resisted. All right. Think of the rifle makers at the arsenal at Harper's Ferry who shot their boss because he put a clock up on the wall. And they kept their jobs. This is the 1830s. Uh, so the workers resisted this. All right. And when they used the phrase pre-industrial, what they were saying is, since these folks were not used to the demands of a factory, they clashed with all this newer stuff that was emerging. All right, so think of it this way. You guys have really good pre-industrial values. The bell rings, what do you do? You know what to do automatically. All right, you're used to it. You're accustomed to it. 
you have industrial values. As you will see throughout this presentation, artisans didn't have these factory type values. They were used to other things uh, about their professional life, which you will see in this video. And because those pre-industrial values clashed with the expected industrial values, there was conflict, as you will see throughout this. All right, and they were the first historians to recognize this. So let's, whoa, I just jumped the gun there. Let's go back. There's more notes. So this change was, was contested in all kinds of ways. And E.P. Thompson and Herbert Gutman looked at the resistance to time and work discipline. Remember, the clock was a symbol of this new expected discipline. So people didn't like working to a clock or working at a pace set by other people, which leads to a tremendous amount of resistance to these new ways of working this new time consciousness, or being aware of what time it is. Historians had, before this, misunderstood industrialization because they focused on the Lowell girls, the New England textile industry, which was an anomaly. It was much more industrialized than anybody else. And historians, back in the day, before E.P. and Herb, they thought that that was the norm, not the exception. Well, they got it wrong. Now, current historians use documents that bring us down to the workers. Uh, census data, newspaper articles, city directories about what they owned and so forth. And they now can study other manufacturing sectors other than the cotton, the textile industry. So they, they now see industrialization as slow and uneven, which is what I said before. You can have, for example, one or a few industrialists using very modern methods but, they're, but they are the minority. The overall industry is still dominated by the craft tradition, the artisans, or a variation close to it. Some artisans were fostering industrial development and machines, but most resisted it. So the artisans, basically the story goes, the few artisans who said, hey, I can sell my stuff outside of Newark, for example. Let me expand my storefront. They're the guys who became Macy's and Lord and Taylor and so forth. The artisans who didn't do that, they became, you know, 50, 60, 70, 80, 90 years later. They or their children, yada, yada, became the workers in the factories. And the artisans who did expand their storefront became the factory owners or the department store owners. All right. So the early 19th century is a period of conflict between people who were in agreement a few years earlier. They used to have the same interests. As you will see, that diverges. So it also should be noted that this did not change, this market revolution did not change the gender or sexual division of labor. Again, New England with the Lowell girls was the exception. Certain things are stronger than financial rationality. That is, men did not want to work, did not want women to work outside the home when married or in, quote, male occupations when single, even when it made sense economically. All right, let's move on. That was the longest slide, by the way. Let's move on. All right, so why is New Jersey important in all of this? Uh, number one, Morris Canal, which we've studied. Also, New Jersey was a, a, a hub of, of manufacturing of stage coaches. Also, urban centers. We have Newark, we have the Delaware Valley, uh, Valley. And don't forget that New Jersey is in between or very close to uh, New York and Philly, two uh, large urban areas. Now, also, you may ask why Newark? All right, uh, well, let's look at the notes here. And by the way, this is what Newark used to look like. It used to be one of the most uh, urban places in the country. So let's look at the notes here. Market society, letter A. Industrialization, we can define it as the process of mass production for a wider market. You know, the artisan realizing I can trade outside Newark. Now, mass production does not necessarily mean large mechanized factories. That assembly line, Henry Ford's assembly line, that is not until the 19-teens. Alright, there are a lot of steps along the way to get to that assembly line, to go from the artisan to the factory assembly line. It takes a hundred years and there's a lot of steps. We can narrow it down to three major steps which we will discuss. All right. But for most of the decades of the 19th century, large numbers of men still labored as artisans or non-mechanized labor. The late 19th century became mechanized. Jot that down. It wasn't until the late century you began to see more and more machines take over the artisans. The difference is, or the thing is, the artisans saw the writing on the wall. 
as their skill, as their job was being de-skilled, as you needed less and less skill to do the job because machines were taking it over, because labor was being divided into steps, uh, their power was being taken away. So they go from being able to shoot their boss because he put a clock in the factory, in the armory, to just drudging along in a factory, barely skilled, making a lot less money. 80, 90, 100 years later. That's the transition. All right, so in the... If you go back to the 1820s in Newark, it was a manufacturing town, but it was a pre-industrial town. Looking at the picture, is that very urban? No, it's not. Uh, most people there were artisans or mechanics, meaning they worked with their hands, they were skilled, and they were autonomous. They had control over themselves, whether they were the master or the journeyman. There was about 8,000 people living there in 1820. By 1860, it was the 11th largest city in the nation sixth in value of manufacturing, and it was because of this manufacturing, this industrialization.